SpaceX is set to make history as the company prepares to launch the biggest rocket ever built to date. Elon Musk said on Twitter that the first orbital stack of the Starship rocket should be ready for flight in the coming weeks. That deadline seems very soon, given that SpaceX has yet to run the 395-foot-tall rocket through all procedures they have done before with all previous prototypes, like pre-flight tests for example. The company's Boca Chica team is already working nearly round the clock, but Musk wants more to help Starship development progress even quicker and to make everything ready for the launch date. So how could SpaceX's Starship be ready for the first orbital test flight in a few weeks? Join us today as we explore how SpaceX is working so hard to take the Starship orbital. SpaceX has been busy over the last couple of months preparing Starship and Starbase for the first orbital test flight. The latest prototype, SN20, is waiting for the chance to go into orbit. Several other prototypes have made flights, ground tests, and sometimes even testing mistakes in the effort to improve future flights. As is perhaps clear from the images, this rocket is monstrously giant. The booster, known as the Super Heavy, is 230 feet, or 70 meters tall, and made from welded stainless steel rings. Its main mission is to propel the massive starship to orbital altitudes and beyond. After each mission, it has the ability to land using its four grid fins to get ready for the next mission. On top of it, the 160-foot starship, designed to be a multi-purpose spacecraft, also has the ability to land vertically, just like the Super Heavy, or by using its legs to land on new places like the Moon or Mars. But this is not the case with the next flight. More on that later. The reusability will cut down the cost of each flight. This is by design to achieve Musk's goal of launching three Starship rockets every day. NASA also picked the Starship Lunar variant to land the next Americans on the Moon in its Artemis mission, with a cost of $2.9 billion. Not only that, NASA also hopes to use the Starship for future Mars missions. Another big name monitoring the progress of the Starship is the U.S. military, who wants to use the Earth-to-Earth -Earth travel to transport heavy cargo and personnel to different points here on our planet. The Starship itself has undergone a few more design changes since 2019 to match its main goal. The most obvious one was when Musk chose to put six Raptor engines on the Starship vehicle instead of seven. Then he changed the number of Raptors on the Super Heavy, initially dropping the number from 35 to 31, and then increasing it again last month to include up to 37 Raptors. He also said that not all engines will be needed on each flight, but at least 24 Raptors are required to carry the huge craft into space. This record number of engines, which is more than any rocket in history, will allow the Super Heavy to produce 72 meganewtons or 16 million pounds of thrust with a gross liftoff mass of over 6 million pounds or 3 million kilograms. SpaceX has conducted test flights of previous Starship prototypes, sending the spacecraft 6.2 miles or 10 kilometers into the sky from the South Texas site. Once it is ready to conduct commercial missions, the Starship and Super Heavy will be the world's first entirely reusable launch system. The company now has turned its attention to send the Starship to orbit for the first time. It will involve the Super Heavy and Starship stacking together. SpaceX has already taken some steps toward this landmark flight on August 6th, when they stacked the two Starship stages atop the South Texas orbital launch mount for the first time ever. Then they de-stacked them again later that day, so technicians could perform the remaining work on each stage. The Super Heavy booster is actually simpler than the Starship prototypes in many ways. Since it does not require a heat shield, it also has simpler electronics and plumbing, and more basic fins, with two main tanks to accommodate its supply of liquid methane and liquid oxygen fuel. It was briefly mated with a ship on the launch pad and fitted with 29 Raptor engines, then it rolled back to the building site for more work, integrating the Raptor engines with hundreds of feet of wiring, more gas and fluid lines, and compressed gas tanks. Then they rolled it back again to the launch site. On the other side, Starship requires two additional header tanks in addition to its main ones, and it switches to the header tanks when landing. The Starship prototype under progress is the SN20, which is also going through a fast-paced development. SN20 marked a crucial step forward, becoming the first ship to complete a cryoproof test with a full heat shield installed. Elon Musk didn't take long to tweet about the results of Starship S20's first cryoproof, confirming that the proof was good, hopefully to see a static fire up next week. 
It is yet unknown if the Raptor vacuum engines will be included in that test, but given their current low expansion ratio design, they will be able to fire within the atmosphere well. Talking about the heat shield, it's composed of many hex tiles, hexagonally shaped bits of ceramic shielding the size of a dinner plate. When it's done, it would have more than 15,000 tiles on the ship. Each tile is held in place by a set of three pins welded on the ship's hull. Under it is a layer of fire retardant insulation. They are installed and inspected manually to avoid damages. The heat shield team is using colors to mark the status of each tile. The green signifies need to check, to be repositioned, and red signifies damage, to be replaced. In the latest chapter of SpaceX's Starship Launch Tower Chronicle, the company has rolled the chopstick component to the pad and attached the device to the end of the tower's newly installed Starship Quick Disconnect Arm. And for the first time, it went through a slow movement this week. Everybody was excited to see it moving and looking forward to seeing it moving alongside with the catching arm. If all goes according to plan, according to the company's filing with the Federal Communications Commission, FCC, the Starship will lift off from the Boca Chica launch facility. Then after three minutes into the flight, the two stages will separate. Then the Super Heavy will splash down in the Gulf of Mexico shortly after liftoff. Starship, meanwhile, will power its way to orbit, loop around our planet once, and come down in the Pacific Ocean near the Hawaiian island of Kauai. All these sequences will take place in less than an hour, but the upcoming test flight will mark the first time a fully stacked takes flight, and the first time the system reaches orbit. SpaceX has aggressively completed a lot of installation and testing this year to meet the deadline of launching this orbital rocket before December. Elon Musk, however, said that the Starship should be ready in a few weeks, though this is pending regulatory approval. Let us know in the comments. What are your expectations on the Starship's first orbital flight? Thanks for watching.